Is that thing, is it on? It's on. Can you all hear me all right? I appreciate y'all coming out to watch. And uh, this talk is about reading your horse for better timing. And uh, you know, in today's world, <laughs> I think it's safe for me to be out here with him right now. In today's world, every time you turn the TV on, there's somebody teaching you how to handle a horse. Every time we come to something like this, there's people like myself out there talking about how to handle a horse. <laughs> So why is it that when you get home and you try to do those neat things you saw, that none of it works? <laughs> or it works to a certain degree. And uh, you know, I, I've been helping people for... <laughs> he said a long time. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's very... It's, it's very frustrating to watch people just try and try and try and not be able to achieve results. Because we all need that little bit of a win to be able to, to go on and do the things that we want to do. And uh, you know, you heard mention in my bio that, that uh, I grew up in the cattle, around cattle. And it was actually being around cattle that taught me how to read a horse. You know, because my dad, for one, didn't like horses. He said he had to walk behind too many of them when he was a kid, and he all they were was something to run out a gate when he went out to check on the cows. And uh, so I grew up handling, yeah, grew up handling cattle on foot. And if you've ever had that experience, you know, especially if you were a stranger to a certain group of cattle, and you go out there and they just leave the scene. You, you stand out there scratching your head wondering, what do I do? How can I communicate with these animals? And uh, so it was, it was pretty apparent to me early on that I needed to start figuring out how to outthink those animals. I, need to, I needed to have a pretty good idea of what they were going to do before they did it so that I could position myself to get them to do what I want. Because, for example, if the barn was over here, and you wanted the cattle to go to the barn, <laughs> the harder you try to get them to go to the barn, the more they want to be down here. Hmm. So if, if what we do, <coughs> if what we do is almost opposite every time that we need to do, <laughs> you can see where the confusion would come into play. So if they didn't want to go this way and they wanted to go that way when we tried to get them to that way, what if we, what if we pushed them this way? All of a sudden they're going to come around and go this way. So it's a matter of positioning. It's a matter of reading and seeing what things, how things happen. When I was in college at the University of Missouri, they had a whole pasture full of Angus cows, most of them daughters of Emulation 31. I don't know if any of you are in the Angus business here, but if you, if you remember, Emulation 31s were notoriously violent when they calved. <laughs> they might be gentle right up until the time they calved, but when they calved, you better be on guard because they would come hunt you up. And you think that won't teach you how to read a cow. You see one over there 100 feet away and she's looking at you like that and her ears start quibbling. You, you better get under the truck or somewhere because she's going to come get you. Well, what I've found that I can do that works, and this is what I teach, is how to, how to read these animals the best you can. So how, how do we go about doing that? Let's look at this horse here. Right now he's got it kind of quiet. He got a whole different posture and demeanor than he had just a second ago. You know, it's springtime and he's a young stud and, and uh, he hadn't had anything done. He's fresh. You know what all those are? Those are excuses for ill behavior. 
and they can't be. They di we just can't allow excuses to determine whether or not we get along with an animal. So what do we do? We read that, we read that posture, we read the animal. Just like us, that eye, as they say, is the mirror to the soul. That eye is gonna tell you where they're looking, it's going to tell you a little bit about the attitude behind where they are at any given moment. The nice thing about horses and cattle is that, that they can change just like that. They can be calm as can be one minute, and the next minute just, you know, ready to flee and bounce it off the wall. They can be highly upset one minute, and for whatever reasons come around, they can go back to being quiet again. So what, how can we be there in a way of influence to help sort of navigate their attitude, navigate them into doing things that will be better for them and better for us? Because it, really what we've got whenever we're dealing with a horse or a cow, we've got a relationship. We've got a conversation taking place between the animal and the person. The person has either spent the time to learn how to communicate in terms that that animal understands, or the person spends a lot of time frustrated because they can't get anything done. So reading the horse to me is probably the most important part, and it is the element that that makes a difference between you being able to get done what you want or not. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start to move this horse around here a little bit. I'm gonna send him forward. And uh, now he went out there, as soon as he left, the first two steps he took was at my decision. The next three steps he took was his choice and he went out here and he left me. So what? That's reading a horse. That's understanding exactly what happened. And, and a horse will, let's send him again here. My decision, now he left, see? The minute that he picked his head up, he shook that head a little bit, and he threw his shoulder up, and he left, he took over. Yeah, he went away, he did what I wanted, but his attitude was wrong. And the only way that you can see that attitude is to read that horse continuously. I'm going to send him again. The fence helped me right there, but he's gone right now. He's not with me. See him looking outside? He's looking more out of the right side of his head right now than he is the left side. So I'm, going to, I'm going to step him up here a little bit and influence that. I'm at a spot that if I was on that horse, I would be my left leg on that horse. Okay, as he was going around. So as he was going around, I was reading his his posture, how he was how he was carrying himself, where he was looking, and the attitude behind all of that. And when I saw him looking outside, he had about maybe ten percent of his his thoughts on me, and ninety percent of them were outside. So when I saw that, I just stepped up the energy a little bit and sent him a little bit harder. So, so I stepped in there in a role of influence matching what I saw in his expression back to me. So it, it's, it's reading a horse is not something that you, you uh, think about and you come out and you do once. It's like there's a sore horse with a blazed face and three white feet, that reading the horse, that's describing the horse, <laughs> but that's not reading the horse. The reading of the horse is exactly like having a conversation with a person. When you're talking with a person, don't you look in that person's eyes and you look, do you see it agreement or, or disagreement or do you see that person shut off when you're talking to them? Do you see that person engage with you? How is that flow going back and forth? See, it's not just, it's not just one-sided. If this horse doesn't have a say in what's going on, it's not a conversation, that's a dictatorship. 
that's not any good for the horse either. However, in this role, the relationship between a horse and a person, there's only room but for one leader, and it cannot be the horse. And uh, I'll let you in on a little secret. <laughs> the way to, to undermine that relationship the quickest is to have your hand out with a bunch of treats in it. That's the quickest way to have a horse disrespect you that I know of. They will take advantage of that every time. Now then they will be there for a different reason. Instead of coming up, up out of respect like this horse is standing there now, they come up with a, an attitude of entitlement like, you don't have anything now, I'm going to just run over you. <laughs> so let's send him out here the other way. He's starting to settle down a little bit. But see, just as he left there, he left with a better attitude this way, but he still, you, you notice that little bit of flip he did in his nose, like right there? His head come up. The higher the skull is on a horse, the less attentive they are to you. Now, when he stopped, he got real attentive. And if you notice where his feet are and how he's holding his feet right now, He's not thinking about moving right now. Don't he just move? Just made a liar out of him. So I'm going to send him out there again a little bit. Get him to come down on earth here just a little bit. Now, here's another thing that, that's going to tie in to what, what we're talking about in this continuous reading whether it's me or, or almost any, anybody that is teaching people, this is one of the most easiest things to teach to people is to get a horse to face up to you, give you both eyes. And that is a wonderful thing when it's your idea. But when that horse is seeking that place, like this one is a little bit right now, to find that place of rest, He's essentially hiding behind his shoulders. And when they're hiding out behind their shoulders, they're not really paying attention to you. They're, they're, they're controlling you with body position. They're in control. If I step over here, he moves his hip. Reposition them shoulders to keep me right there. You see? If I step over here, he'll probably reposition again. And that's okay if that's what you want. But you got to realize that what this horse is up to sometimes. <laughs> if they're just positioning themselves to have the advantage over you all the time, who's in charge? Who took over as a role of leader? See, in, in their world, who moves whose feet is the winner? Who moves whose feet is in charge? You ever see a couple of bulls pushing one another around? They'll push and push and push and push. And the one that's had enough of that pushing, boy, when he leaves, he'll leave out of there at a run. And the one that pushed him out of the way to stand there, and if that other one comes back up, he'll just swell up like this, and the other one usually goes away unless he hadn't had enough. So that's what's going on here with this horse. Now, now look in his eye compared to what it was just a few minutes ago. See, there's a completely different horse standing here now than there was just a second ago. What did I do to make that change? Very little. I influenced him a couple times. I've let him stand there. And now all of a sudden his mouth is shut and he's attentive. Like, yes sir, what can I do for you next? Just sometimes I think that we watch and we want to, we want to duplicate what we see being done and we come home and we'll do too much. We will wear them out with this new trick that we learned because we liked the results so much that we saw. And we'll do it, and we'll do it, and we'll do it, and we'll do it. And pretty soon, we become boring to the horse. Pretty soon, in that state of boringness, the horse becomes frustrated with us. And we lose that spontaneity. We lose that freshness that comes in a meaningful conversation back and forth. 
you just think about yourself. If you're talking to somebody and they only had a vocabulary of about three words and they just kept repeating those three words over and over, how many times can you listen to the same three words without checking out? See? I, I think horses, you know, deserves to have uh, more uh, credit than that to be able to sort through what we're saying. So let's, let's go back to, to moving this horse around just a little bit. I'm going to get bigger. What do I mean I got bigger? I'm the same size I was when I came into pen. But the energy around me, you see, is what got bigger. And I can, I can raise that energy and I can lower that energy based on what I'm reading. That's why reading the horse is so important. So he's left me right there, so I'll get a little bigger. You see, as soon as he felt my presence, you see him take that foot and step out. He's wanting to face up. Can you see that? Let's get him to stop flat right over there and stay flat. Let's see if we can get a couple steps backwards there. How many steps did he take before he stepped into my picture? He was wanting to face up. I said, no, that's not it. I told you all ahead of time that what I wanted was the steps backward. So I was reading him while I was asking him. He made the wrong choice. Then he thought. Then he made the right choice. What made the choice wrong or right was no more than I decided. This is what I want you to do right now. If you do what I want you to do, the promise I make to a horse is this, that if you do what I want you to do, what I ask you to do, you're going to find complete freedom in that. Your feet might be moving, but there's complete freedom in the thing that I wanted you to do. So, I'm trying to, I'm trying to build a case for reading the horse here. You know, it, it, it's, it's not just about getting them to do things. It's about us really having that conversation with them in a meaningful way. <coughs> you see him pushing on me there a little bit. When I send him out of there a little bit, he's leaning. That's a horse that is resisting. I'm going to slow down just a little bit and get him to stand up. He's halfway outside. Just send him out of there again. Get stopped right there. Just back up. Just change direction. Get stopped. When a horse will go out and stop and square up like he's done in his feet right there and look at you out of the opposite eye of the side that you're on, you know you've got the whole horse in your hand. I, uh, a few years ago, had started realizing that in my groundwork that I had been changing direction every time I stopped a horse. And all of a sudden, they got, got ahead of me. They were preparing to turn every time they stopped. So if I can have him in a spot of neutral, and that's what this reading tells me, that's a spot of neutral. Then, I, then I've got the ability, if I want to turn, I can send them through there and it's a more relaxed turn. It's not a just throw yourself through turn. Again, back to reading. What's the attitude behind whatever the horse is doing? Get stopped right there. There he comes in with that outside eye again. I'm going to ask him to come to me sideways here. Now I'm going to ask him to move his just his front feet around. I'm going to ask him to move laterally away from me. I'm going to ask him to come back to me. Let's move the back feet. 
Let's go forward. Let's get stopped. So all of this stuff looks neat when you're watching it, but how do you get it? How do you get it? It comes from you being present. You've got to be in the moment, reading that horse with every step, with every thought. And when you see that horse, I always talk about having a clear mental picture. That's what I hope to be known for as the guy that always talks about the clear mental picture. Because that gives you your timing. It tells you when to do what. You've got to know exactly what you want that horse to do at all times. And when you do, you've got everything you need to get that horse to do whatever it is you want him to do. But if you don't have a clear mental picture, and it's not a, uh, it's not a still picture that I'm talking about. This is a motion ongoing picture. I happened to catch a, a YouTube a few years ago where they had made a, a video about how Walt Disney created Anastasia. And they, they went through all of the intricate details that were involved in the making of that film. And I was, as I was watching that, I thought, you know, that's exactly what I do when I'm working with a horse. I didn't know it, but that's exactly what I do. Now, if I could just figure out a way to get paid like Walt Disney did, that'd be, that'd be great. But anyway, the point of being is the artist that painted those pictures of those cartoon characters had to know that sometimes the camera angle would look like it was over here. So we had to, we had to draw the painting of that picture just right over here. Sometimes the camera might be here, so they'd have to make adjustment in, the, in that so it was three-dimensional, all, all the way around, that they had to make that, and that's what made that thing come to life. So the picture I'm talking about is how this horse is mentally, what's he feel like, what's he doing, what's his posture like, what is he telling me, what is he feeding back to me? Is he listening to me? Is he not listening to me? What do I do when he's not? It, it doesn't take a lot to change a horse's attitude, to change a horse's desire when you're really paying attention to them because they're, they're very, very sensitive. They're highly emotional. And when a horse expresses himself, like this horse when he came in here was rearing and bucking and kicking, that was emotion that was a horse flexing his muscles that was a horse playful he was he was just doing what horses do so is he right now when you see horses out in the pasture with one another most of the time you know when when horses are gathered up together in the pasture see he's outside the pen so I'll get him back in the pen here Watch his head come down here. He left. I'm waiting here. I'm waiting for this horse to tell me that he's with me. I'm waiting for this horse to, to relax. I'm waiting for this horse there, we had a change. The change was the thought in his mind. You all probably couldn't see it out there, but he shut that eye, and when he shut that eye, that eye went soft, and he, he immediately changed his demeanor right there. So this is what you see when, you, when, when horses are just standing out in the pasture and, and they're with one another. They're calm and they're relaxed most of the time unless they're threatened by something. And that's the demeanor that I like to have in my horses all the time when I'm working with them, if I can, if I can keep that. So the reading of that attitude is key to you being able to accomplish whatever it is you want based on what you want. I hope I'm not talking in too many circles here like that, but the, the, the holding fast to that clear mental picture 
no matter what angle you're at, like that cartoonist did making that, making that movie, no matter what angle they were at, they had to portray that, that image as if it was, you know, real, real life. So the image that I hold of that horse is going to have a, a boundary in front of them, a boundary on each side, a boundary behind. So I think of that horse as being in a box all the time. And if that horse is between the boundaries of that box, that horse is going to have complete freedom. If that horse is up against the boundaries, like a few times when he went around here, he was just leaning into me. He wasn't in the box. He was leaning on the inside with his shoulder, and he was up against the outside with his hip. So he was just scraping both sides of the boundary as he was going around. And, but if I can arrange it to where when he gets between those boundaries and he gets attentive to me, whatever it is that I want him to do can be right in the palm of my hand. I want him to move, move away from me here just a little bit. I want him to go forward. I want him to stop. I didn't want that face up. So if I watch those hips move, and I'm, if I don't read that and I don't step up in here and move that shoulder back over, I've set the stage to let that horse take back over. That's why things aren't working when you get home and try this stuff. You're, you're probably missing the time when that horse, if you ask a horse to move his feet and he moves his feet, and he, and he doesn't stop as soon as you stop, and he moves his feet some more, he just took over. And if he takes one, two, maybe three steps on his own, his own decision-making process, he is loose. So, anyway, that's, that's the gist of reading these horses.